One Plastic Bag by Miranda Paul. Jao, Gambia. Isato walks with her chin frozen. Fat raindrops pelt her bare arms. Her face hides in the shadow of a palm leaf basket, and her neck stings with every step. Warm scents of burning wood and bubbling peanuts too drift past her. Her village is close now. She lifts her nose to catch the smell. The basket tips. One fruit tumbles, then two, then ten. The basket breaks. Isoto kicks the dirt. Something silky dances past her eyes. Softening her anger, it moves like a flag flapping in the wind and settles under a tamarind tree. Isoto slides the strange fabric through her fingers and discovers it can carry things inside. She gathers her fruits in the bag. The basket is useless now. She drops it, knowing it will crumble and mix back into the dirt. Four goats greet Isoto as grandmother, Bombay, emerges from her kitchen hut. Hurry in before the rain soaks your beautiful boba. Isoto scurries in, and grandmother serves spicy rice and fish. Rain drums, drums on the creaking aluminum roof. I broke your basket, Isoto confesses. But I found this. Plastic. Grandmother frowns. Day after day, Isoto watches neighbors tote their things in bright blue or black plastic bags. Children tiny from, tiny from, tiny from, tiny holes poked in clear bags. Market trays filled with minties wrapped in rainbows of plastic. The colors are beautiful, she thinks. She swings her bag high and handle breaks. One paper escapes, then two, then ten. Isoto shakes the sand off her papers. Another plastic bag floats by, and she tucks her things inside. The torn bag is useless now. She drops it to the dirt, as everyone does. There's nowhere else to put it. Day after day, the bag she dropped is still there. One plastic bag becomes two, then ten, then a hundred. Plastic isn't beautiful anymore, she thinks. Her feet step down a clearer path, and the thought floats away. Years pass, and Isotope grows into a woman. She barely notices the ugliness growing around her, until the ugliness finds its way to her. Isoto hears a goat crying and hurries toward grandmother's house. Why is it tied up? Where are the other goats? Inside, the butcher is speaking in a low voice. Many goats have been eating these, he says. The bags twist around their insides and the animals cannot survive. Now three of your goats and so many goats in the, in the village have died. Grandmother Mombe's powerful shoulders sag. Isoto must be strong and do something. But what? Isoto's feet lead her to the old, ugly road. A pile of garbage stands as wide as grandmother's cooking hut. Mosquitoes swarm near dirty pools of water alongside the pile. Smoke from the burning plastic stings her nose, her feet back away. Goats scamper past. They forage through the trash for food. Her feet stop. She knows too much to ignore it now. Holding her breath, she plucks one plastic bag from the pile, then two, then ten, then a hundred. What can we do, Isoto asks her friends. Let's wash them, says Fatim, pulling out Omo soap. Maram grabs a bucket and Aicha fetches water from the well. Peggy finds clothespins and they clip the wash bags onto the line. As the bags dry, Isoto watches her sister crochet. Can you teach me? Wow, yes. Her sister shows Isoto the stitches, then hands her a metal tool. Isoto's fingers busy themselves in, out, around. Jarif? Thank you. Isoto finds a broomstick and carves her own tool from wood. What's that for? Fatim asks. Isoto pauses. She and Peggy have an idea, but will their friends think it's crazy? Will the idea even work? Nervously, she explains the plan. One friend agrees to help, then two, then five. The woman cuts bags into strips and rolls them into spools of plastic thread. Before long, they teach themselves how to crochet with this thread. Nakaligi B, asks grandmother. How is the work? Danka, danka, answers Isoto. Slow. Some people in the village laugh at us. Others call us dirty. But I believe what we're doing is good. The woman crochet by candlelight away from those who mock them. Until morning comes when they will no longer work in, the, in secret. 
fingers sore and blistered, Isoto hauls the recycled purses to the city. One person laughs at her, then two, then ten, then one woman lays galaxy coins on the table. She chooses a purse and shows it to one friend, then two, then ten. Soon everyone wants one. Isoto fills her own purse with Dulcy. She zips it shut and rides home to tell grandmother she has made enough to buy a new goat. And when she pauses by the pile of rubbish, she smiles because it's smaller now. She tells herself one day it will be gone and my home will be beautiful. And one day... It was.